Yo, welcome to this two-part guide about the Rulepi Adventure Lock. I will show you how to get it done super fast. Just kidding, there's no fast way to do this. This will still take a shitload of hours. In this specific video, I'll be talking about the route I'll be taking. And in the other one, I will give general tips about questing, the combat and everything. So make sure to check it out as well. So, there's two ways of approaching it. You can focus on the side quest from the start, never really leaving the first main quest area, which is Balenos, Serendia and Calfeon. So you would just run through the main quest once and then do all the side quests there. Doing it in this way, you will need maxed out character slots because you will have way less quests per character. And even then, you will most likely not end up with 30k quests with that method. So you will end up going to Medaya and Kama Sylvia to do the main quests over there and to get to the 30k mark. So if you're only interested in getting it done as fast as possible, go to this timestamp, that's where I start talking about the side quests. The way I'm going to show it to you is to get the most out of every character. You will not need maxed out character slots and doing the main quest is way more chill and in all honesty it's not that much slower. And you will end up with way more CP, way more combat XP, way more skill points on your alts if you care about that. So for me I prefer that way and I prefer to recommend that way too. Alright, so we have a new character now. First thing we do, let's do the main quest. Pretty straightforward. When it comes to the crossroads at the goblins, it doesn't matter which one you choose, because all of them have two quests. But I would still recommend doing every crossroad once, for the knowledge and titles each one gives. The next crossroad you face is not too much later. It's right over in Heidel in the Golden Totem, where you have to choose between three crossroads again. The best crossroad to take is each of the reasons. It has way more quests than the other two, and isn't really slower than the other two. But here again, I would still do the other two once at least, for the knowledge. From here on out, there's not too much optimizing you can do. Just go on and finish the main quest until Kalfian. One thing to note, while you're doing the main quest, there are some combat quests appearing at some grind spots, like at Polys for example. You should take those while main questing because those disappear when you continue questing. Don't mind me forgetting to take them. When you're done with the main quest line, what I would do is get the gathering, processing and cooking level to professional one. This unlocks a ton of new quests later on when you do the side questing. Why would I do it now? Because you're close to Bear, the best gathering level spot in the game. Go there, get your level up, then go process some timber or some flax to get the professional one and then hand in cooking seals or cook some pickled vegetables or vinegar. All of those should be very fast even without mastery gear. And now we can start doing the main quests in Medaya. A little twist to it though, I would do the side quests while doing the main quest. Because there aren't too many quests in Medaya and it's not really worth going back to Medaya just to do side quests later on. You don't have to do every single quest in Medaya. Especially if you have max characters, then getting 30k is no problem anyway. Because characters will not be your bottleneck or the amount of quests. For the one crossroad you have to choose, take 4 Altinova. This crossroad is faster and has more quests. That's an absolute no-brainer. Then again, do the other one too once. Knowledge, titles, blah blah blah, you know it. So now to the part everyone loves to hate. I'll tell you right away though, you will not be doing the entire Valencia main quest. I actually did Valencia 2 on every single character, but that's just some completionism stuff. I would recommend stopping Valencia 1 main quest when you get to the quest Bashim's answer. That quest tells you to go to Shakatu. I think at that point it's absolutely not worth going for anymore. And even before it's kinda iffy because not every single quest counts into the quest log. But I'll talk about that more in the other video. But before you go and leave Valencia, you should do the side quests here. Same reasoning as Medaya. You wouldn't go back to Valencia just to do the side quests. And also, you get tons of XP doing those quests. You also get tons of XP doing the main quest in Valencia. So if you're doing this huge 30k project, I would recommend getting all of your characters to 61. Because it doesn't take any extra time and you do it all by questing. So if you equip the Chenga Tome now, do the side quests all over Valencia entrance, it's really easy to get 58. 
and 58 is the point you need. You can also skip doing the Medaya side quests while doing the main quest and come back now. It takes a bit longer, but it's easier to get 58 in that way because you get surprisingly high XP for the Valencia main, even more than through side questing. But I had never any problems getting 58, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Alright, so now we can go back to Calfion. Precisely said, to Calfion City itself. Because in Calfion City you get the most out of the side quests. You get the full 1.3% XP per quest on level 58 to level 59. So do all the side quests in Calfion and even if you reach level 59, continue. There's no reason to stop. You can start at Rubin, go to our the flower vendor and from there on all the side quests lead you to the next side quest. You see the next side quest on the way and blah blah blah. It's easy to find tons of quests if you just follow all the side quests you do. But I'll show you some of the hidden ones. On this map you can see three quest NPCs that are kinda hidden. The first one actually gives you a inventory slot. And the other two are right next to each other. After that, we continue with the common main quest. You can choose to do the side quest right away while doing the main quest or do it later separately to do the level 61 push in one go. I would do the Kama main quest before that though because it unlocks some quests. Even though it's not really hard to get to 61 if you've done it once or twice before. For this quest where you have to gather yellow flowers, in the rare case that the flowers are already gathered, there's another little spot down the road. At some point during the Kama main quest, you will get to Tulit's cave. For the quest, the friendship between the sun and moon. For that quest, you have to answer five riddles. The answers are time, dice, nature, light and darkness, and wisdom. And for the quest after that, you will have to type a number into the general chat. And the number depends on your zodiac sign. If your character is a boat, a key, camel, or trend all, you have to type four. If it's an elephant, ceiling stone or wagon, it's a 5. If the character has a hammer, shield or goblin, it's a 6. For black dragons, it's a 7 and for giants, it's an 8. And now we're doing the quick push to level 61. We go to the side quest in Star's End, Karma and Dragon. I've already done a more detailed video on that. I'll link it in the top right corner. Check it out. Next up is the Dragon main quest line. You could also do it before getting to 61, but there's quite a lot of combat involved and unlocking all the skills and getting a few more skill points is quite useful. The Dragon main quest line is pretty straightforward. There's no real tricks or tips for it, just run it. When you're fighting the phantoms, get some pots, buff up to get it done as quickly as possible. For the Garmo fight in the end, you can theoretically go AFK after hitting it a few times when the first allies appear and then just have your fairy auto pot and I don't know, go make a coffee and come back to the lower dead Garmoth. But this method isn't super fast though, so I still recommend doing it actively. From Duvengrun, go to Velia and do the first few quests of the Odelita main quest line. Those will tell you to go to the Moria Guard post and on the way you can do the first 14 or 15 quests of the Stars and quest line because you don't need to do any killing before that. If you have the AP on the character you're doing it on, you can do the Stars and quest line. I don't recommend it, it's pretty slow, it's not a lot of quests, for the time spent at least. But when you're done with that, you can continue with the Odalita main quest line. <laughs> Continuing with the OD main, you can do those quests super fast. Most of them are just talking, 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 talking. And you have around 140 quests maybe before you have to actually kill two rows. But I recommend stopping at that point and just leaving it be. Even if you have someone to kill them for you or you have enough key on that alt, it's not really worth the time. Because after that you have to do two kill quests on Thornwood 2 
and those take quite a long of time too and you don't miss out on too many quests. Anyway, one of the quests in the Odorita main quest line sends you to Grandia and when you're there don't forget to do the side quest in Grandia. Those are rather new so it's easy to forget about them, just, just do them now. I haven't done the OD main quest line too often because it came out after I reached 30k already but I remember the off of the crypt. That quest was kind of confusing to me but you just have to go to every NPC the quest tells you about and do a quest. It's less confusing than it seems in the first moment. Also in the last quest of Odelita 1 you have to find an NPC without a marker and it's quite obvious with the quest text but you can find the NPC right here at Onan's Valley. And for this quest one of the items you have to find it's right across the entrance on the shelf. I was searching for it for a long time. For the quest Two Young Phantoms, the answers to the riddles are He gave them thick feathers. She called the two fairies to help them settle on the ground. He followed the remaining sisters of the moon and became a paradise. He narrows fields. Ophelia I know. Also there's this Dames quest again, like in Kama Sylvia, where we have to type a number depending on the zodiac sign. It's going to be the same number as before, just type in the same one. And if you're wondering in the very last quest, how to craft this dumb gem of imbalance, because no one tells you how, I have to google it every time, this is how. I hate it, I really hate it. But if you're done with this, you're done with all the main quest lines. Now we can fully focus on the side quests. So now comes the slightly harder part. We start side questing in Kalfjall. In isolation, this part is the fastest quest you can do. And that's why you should probably take your time with your first one or two characters here, because you can save so much time if you do it efficiently and know where to go. I will kinda show you how, but you won't really learn it from one video. You gotta do it yourself. So just turn your brain on for the first two runs and you're good to go. I'll also make a map and include it in the description with most of the side quest spots marked on it. So make sure to check it out and make yourself a copy and have it open on the side while you're on the grind. So where do we start? If you've done the Calfion City quests before, you might have taken a quest from Rubin called Ever Joyful Garnier Nomad Troop. You can start from that quest. Go to that clown and take everything you see on the way. Go to Northern Wheat Plantation, go to Bree Tree Runes, go to the Trolls. You don't need to go to Ephira, there's not really any quests there. Go to Florin, go to Dia's Farm. Just run through all those spots and you will see tons of stuff on the way. But honestly, if you start doing quests in Northern Calfeon, you will run around and find every quest automatically. And that's why I said you should probably just turn your brain on for the first one or two characters. So you know where to find all the quests. Continuing after Northern Calfeon, we move to the south. From Dia's farm, you should have a quest leading you to Falrus Dirt Farm. There's two or three easy quests over there and then you continue to Kaplan. A quest from Kalfion Parliament should also lead you there, which is called Kalfion Resource Report, I believe. And there again, there's quite a lot of quests in Kaplan, and all the quests in Kaplan lead you to the surrounding areas. You will get quests to go to Oza's house, and there's more quests there. You will go to Oza Pass. You will go to Janin Farm. You will go to Giants. And you will also go to Trina Fort and Trina Beacon Towers. Just from entering Kaplan, you have pretty much dealt with the entirety of Southeastern Kalfion. And from there, yeah, from there we're heading to Bear. You have to do some processing and gathering over there and some killing in Hex. From there, there are a few easy quests in Longleaf Tree Sentry Post and Creoville. And then, then we go to Trent. Again, Trent has a ton of quests, but you also need a ton of items prepared. I have a spreadsheet link down in the description, which has all the items you need for Trent, for Calfeon, for Balenos, for Serendia. If there's any items missing, let me know, I'll fix it. Thank you.
you can skip most of the grind spots in Western Kaifan. I would take the Catfishman quest still. There's some quests at South Kaya Pier and some at the North End of Catfishman Camp. For the quests at Catfishman Camp, I would only do the first three and then dip. And from here, we are done with Kalfion. Doing side quests in that area is just as simple as doing the main quests. You start at Western Guard Camp, do all the quests there, and you will literally go through the entirety of Balenos and Serendia just by following quests. Just be sure to not be on an Elvia server when you enter Serendia. There's no special trick or any hidden quest in this area. Just run through it like the quests tell you to, and you're done super fast. So what can you do with the information I gave you now? You can either follow along and do it exactly the same, or you can take it step by step. Like, first do the main quest on all your characters, do the Medaya main quest on all your characters, and so on and so on. That's probably more efficient, but also super boring, so I don't know about that. I didn't do it in that way. And the third option would be just to ignore everything I said. Just run through the main quest, doing the side quest on the side, and then go around Kalfion and do all the side quests there. And just do that on every character. But you might run out of characters, and you might have to do stuff after that. But that can also be the best way for some people. But if you don't have max character slots, there's no way you can skip too many main quests. It would just be too much effort to go look around for every single side quest. But that's it with this video. I hope I could bring you some useful information. And make sure to check the other 30k video I made out. Because those two go hand in hand. So, like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell if you don't want to miss the one or two videos I upload a year. And thank you for watching. See you next time.